back in, I guess it was 69, we first heard Yes, back in high school, I guess it was. Everybody thought, God, where are these guys at? Wow. Were you, as a band, sort of part of the whole psychedelic drug trip back then? You know? Not as a group, no. I think individually we all went through our changes in, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, each member of the group had uh, dabbled, as you say, in, mm -hmm. in various kind of things. I think, I think that's what uh, made us, because we were all pretty seasoned professionals at that time, we'd all been in the game for about six, seven years, eight years maybe, and uh, it just seemed natural to work hard, to get into a lot of uh, entertainment side of things, uh, musically and staging and everything, and that's possibly how we, we felt, well, there's so many bands are getting together and splitting up. Well, we're going to get together. We're going to work hard. So we've got something there. And there's, there's not, that's going to keep us going. Yeah. And that's what a, a, a lot of rehearsals can do for a band. If you work pretty hard on your rehearsals, then you've got something to stand by. You can all, all look at it and say, well, we've created that. Let's stick to it. Yeah, I was just always curious because I'll never forget those early days when we first heard yet. That's so imaginative. Yeah. Where'd they get that? Um, you know, the first album, yes. Who was Paul Clay? Is that the guy who produced it? Yeah, he, he was um, a guy that was introduced to us via Atlantic Records when we first signed to Atlantic Records. We we'd heard about what producers could do for a band, and uh, George Martin's of this world who were very few and far between. So when we were introduced to Paul Clay, we just accepted the fact that he was a producer and he was going to help create the eventual sound on the record and so on. And um, to go in a new group into studios and do an album, first album, is, al is always so exciting that you, you just wound up in the whole thing. And that's the way it came out, that uh, there could have been a lot more sound production, but basically it was what we were at that time. We weren't uh, over sure about what produ produ a producer's job was, so we accepted whatever happened. Mm. And uh, in retrospect, when we look back at, at that time, um, <coughs> a, little more, a little bit more musical uh, help recording-wise would have helped a lot. It was, it was uh, fresh in a way. How long were you together before you recorded that? About six months. Oh, really? Mm. Um, did you feel comfortable with the final product? We weren't sure. Again, I'm not, we weren't aware of what better things could come out because we weren't shown anything better. We accepted it. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously when you put it next to another record, you think, gosh, that isn't really a good sound. So that's one of the things that we felt later, but at the time, it was uh, all that we'd heard of ourselves on record, so it was obviously, it was exciting. I had an inner feeling that it was okay, but it wasn't incredible. And uh, that's the way it was, that's exactly what happened. It wasn't an incredibly well-accepted album, but it was like an initial beginning for the group. How did it do in England? P pretty well, it was, uh, I say it wasn't over, overly accepted, it was just nicely accepted. And we started to get a name going for ourselves. And that's the, the main, Thing to be doing. I mean, if you have a, a number one album with your first album, 
I got something else. <laughs> something else. I can't even think uh, about things like that. Uh, on the second record, with the string arrangements, were those used in lieu of a Mellotron or? Yeah, I, f I felt so. Mm -hmm. At the time, um, I'd started listening to a lot of classical music, starting with the... The Planets? The Planets, Dvorak, uh, Tchaikovsky, um, generally centering around that area. Uh, it was exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I felt very strong about uh, orchestration at that time and wondered if we could ever, as a group, get that together on stage especially. To be able to go on stage and sound like an orchestra would be incredible. <laughs> so we had a lot of talks about this and uh, after a while we decided that the, the Time and a Word album we would try and feature a kind of strings and horns and brass and so on. Mm -hmm. um, is that the album, that was the album you were introduced to Eddie Offord? Yeah, right. because Tony Colton produced that right. with us. Again, it was uh, another situation where someone like Tony Colton could come in and he had a lot of experience in recording and he was a musician, he was a singer and writer and he did help us immensely at that time. The, we weren't sure, again, we weren't sure about what we wanted to put down sound-wise on record, so we got session musicians in. And session musicians are fine to a point, but in some ways they're not going to bend over backwards to really get off on what they're doing. Right, right. Unless uh, they're arranged to do so. And uh, the arranger that we had, I think it was Paul Cox, who was a very fine arranger, very well st studied arranger, he knew what he was putting down. Um, possibly didn't have the drive that I would have liked to have seen in, in someone to really get that, get them guys going. But it was just a matter of course that these things happened and we accepted them and enjoyed them immensely. I mean, it was a very enjoyable period. Looking back, I read one time, a few years ago, that looking back on time in the words, you felt the uh, lyrics were kind of immature, or the album was immature. Yeah. Just sort of overstatements. Grocery store, ten bucks. Just making change for plastic Yeah, it's difficult, really, because, um... You've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. You've got to start to uh, putting your thoughts down. And you, you have to start in, in a certain position. At the time, probably when I had that interview, I was thinking about it and saying that it was, it was obviously immature because that's what it was. There wasn't anything wrong in it. But it was, it was fine, you know. Yeah. Like ecstasy, the sound of trees, most anything, what a baby sees. Did you go through some sort of psychological resurgence in that era? Because the lyrics seem to reflect that, just so, so positive. Yeah, just a definite realization that uh, things were available if you want to work for them, and they were there. And there was a kind of definite feeling that we'd started on something, and it was going to go on for a long time, and that was it. Yeah. It was very strong. Yeah, it, it sounds like that. It seemed like at that time, it was such it was a lot of the music reflected sort of burnout, and then there was this yes, the, the, lyrically on that album, just whew, very positive. The uh, third album, uh, it seems like that was sort of a breakthrough album. Is that uh, correct? I feel so. I think it became the first group album. It wasn't produced by anybody. It wasn't organized by anybody but the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... With getting Steve Howe in the band, it rejuvenated a lot more sense of being what a group is. I could talk to Steve a lot easier about music, about what we could be doing, where we're going, and so on.
band have reached a new level of technology with that album? Yeah. We, we um, basically, Eddie Offord came along and we got together. We, we'd been in the country for two months rehearsing the album and the big upheaval in management and Peter and everything, our first kind of guy who leaves the band. And there was a big upheaval in management at the time and we were left stranded on our own. And it felt like we were stranded and it made us more solid as a, as a group. And we didn't rely on anybody. anything but the group and we went in the studio in our vision and Eddie was there and we were a very tight situation and we weren't going to budge Any, anybody could walk in and say you know, why don't you do this try that we weren't going to budge we had an idea we knew what we were going to do because we worked it out and that's why the Yes album was the first important statement from the band in terms of really finding its feet. seemed to have a quality I just personally call cinematic rock you know like you could close your eyes and, and listen to Starship Trooper and you were flying through space mm. did you try to accomplish that kind of feeling going in there was that it just happened it, we, really? we, we had this again we had this strong sense that we were doing the right thing no matter what mm -hmm. we were doing the right thing and it was going to happen whether it, whether people was going to buy it or not is another mm -hmm. thing, but we knew we were doing something Excellent. and it was happening. Excellent. And we didn't we, we didn't rely on a producer, a ranger, or anything. We just relied on the band as a group of musicians, and it was there. Yes, music. An evening with John Anderson. A Superstars Radio Network special will continue right after this pause. <laughs>